Hello together and welcome to a new video by Ingenieru. Today I want to show you how you can measure the mass and the number of particles and lights. In industry design this is a common task if you want to analyze a machine or application. Often the plant operators want to know what the maximum possible storage capacity or mass flow rate of their specific plant will be. To analyze this problem I have created a simple example. It consists of a silo filled with bulk material. At the outlet of the silo there is a slide valve and a pipe. After opening the slide valve the bulk material flows through the pipe into the container. If we take a closer look to the example the following questions may arise. How much particles or mass are in the silo in total at the beginning? What is the particle or mass flow rate inside the pipe? How many particles or mass have passed the pipe after a certain time? Or how much particles or mass have been transported to the container already? In the end we want to have a result that represents the mass particle number and the according flow rates over time. For example like a CSV file. The first method I want to show you is the measurement of the particle mass or number of particles in a defined volume. For this you must know where your volumes of interest are in the simulation box. In our example we want to know how much mass is in the silo and in the container. Depending on the origin of our systems you can see the dimensions of the silo and the container. The silo for example has a diameter of 2 meters ranging from x and y minus 1 to plus 1. The height in z direction is 3 meters ranging from 5 to 8 meters. Hence we know the dimensions of our volumes of interest we can add the necessary commands to our light script. Before we go in the final script we will have a look to the new commands in general. First we define a region by the region command. The name of the region will be measurement volume and the region shape is a cylinder with z as rotation axis through the origin. The radius is 1 meter and the range in z direction is from 5 to 8 meters. After we have defined our region we generate a new variable which will be named mass in volume. The command line variable mass in volume equal mass bracket open all measurement volume bracket close means that the mass of all particles in the defined region measurement volume is saved to the variable mass in volume. By replacing the keyword mass by the keyword count in the command line you will get the number of particles inside the defined regions instead. To save the data of the variables mass in volume and particle in volume to a CSV file we define a new output command. The name of the fix is output and we want to print the data every output steps into the CSV file. The output steps has to be defined by a output time. In the quote marks we write the variables we want to write in the CSV file. The single variables are separated by a comma. Screen no means we don't want to print the data in the terminal screen. The file name where we save the data is named regionmeasurement.csv. Ok, let's take a look to the script. The general structure of the script is the same as in the silo tutorial. For more details of the command take a look here. In the beginning we have the header with general comments which we usually don't have to change. In the system variables we define the limits of our simulation box so that all geometries and particles fit in. Also we set the time step of the simulation. In the next section we define the number of different materials. Next we set the variables for the particles. The radius, particle and the fraction of each radius and also the particle density. The filling parameters define the filling time and the filling mass as well the times for settling of the particle, the time to open the lid and the time for the discharge. 
In the next step, we will define the simulation box, the contact models and the material properties from the beginning we want to use. These are the same as in the other DEM tutorials. After this, we load our geometries from the SDL files and activate the wall command. Next, we define the generation and insertion of the particles and the dumping for the data for post-processing to visualize. After the dumping command, we will add our new commands for the particle and mass measurement. For the measurement of the silo, we define the cylindrical region, measure silo region and use the variables mass silo and number of particle silo to save the data. For the container measurement, we define a block region named measure container region with the outer dimensions of the container. The related variables for the mesh measurement and the particle measurement we call mass container and number of particles container. Next, we have to write the data to our CSV file. For this, we define a new variable output time equal 0.05 seconds and a variable t equal step multiply dt. The variable t gives the actual simulated time. The fixed output will print the variables in quote marks every output steps to the file region measurements CSV. The title quote marks will be our headline to the CSV table. After all commands for the measurement in the regions has been defined, we add our commands for running the simulation from the silo tutorial. First, we fill the silo for fill steps. We wait settle steps, open the lid for open steps and run the discharge for discharge steps. After the simulation is finished, we can open the files in Paraview. First, we open the dump files of the SDL and the particles and make them look pretty. This is not a necessary step for the mass measurement and I will speed it up a little bit. When we are happy with our model, we can open the CSV file of our measurements. I didn't save the CSV file in the post folder, but one folder in front. If you load the CSV, PowerView automatically opens as a spreadsheet. You can close the spreadsheet and open a new separate view as line chart. If you activate the CSV in line chart, you can see that the four lines of mass and particle in the silo and the container over time are loaded. While the mass is much smaller in compared to the particle number, we split the view again and open a second line chart. Now we activate the mass graphs in the upper one and the number of particle graphs in the lower one. Last, we rename the axis name. Now our measurements are loaded and we can see the mass and the number of particles over time in the silo and the container. In the upper chart we see that 7500 kg are loaded in the silo, the red line, and after the discharge the 7500 kg are unloaded totally into the container, the black line. The same we can see for the particle number in the lower chart. For sure, you could also do the data analysis in Excel. This is often the preferred way for more detailed analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave a comment and subscribe.